Hey, Vaughn here. We are finna look at one of the craziest jobs to work at oil rigs, a real man's place, supposedly. I'm by massage. <laughs> I don't know where I was going with that itch. I am not. What is it called? Massage and I don't fucking know. But anyway, women can work here too. Let, let me get that out the way. Anyway, we're here about to look at why, why oil rigs are dangerous, okay? I already messed up to the intro. I do have allergies, that's why I sound weird. Um, I'm at stage like three. Stage one, my my throat starts to hurt, but not too crazy. Stage two, it hurts like crazy. Stage three, my nose starts running. I think we at stage four, my nose is running and my eyes is watering. It's like my nose is starting burning up, feeling irritated, then my eyes get irritated. And then tears just start coming down, bro. But uh, yeah, we got a couple more days to deal with this, but then we should be 100%. Now, y'all not here to hear me talk about my allergies, though. We are finna look at why oil rigs are extremely dangerous. And they better be getting paid a bunch of money. That being said, let's go. Deep water oil Oh, if you're new, like, comment, subscribe. If you're not new, just keep coming back. Subscribe, but what are you doing? Rigs are extremely dangerous places Damn. to work. Broke his hip. Deep water oil rigs. Can y'all see? Hold up, gotta check. Okay, we good, we good, we good. Are extremely dangerous Boom. places Knock to work. Knock this hip out of place. I don't know how you walk. Uh oh, uh oh. Oh, never. Oh, I ain't even see the dude on them. Hello. Bro. They're taller than some of the highest skyscrapers on land and are designed to face the worst hurricanes at sea. But how do they get to the middle of the ocean? And what training do offshore workers do? Bro, you know it's crazy when you gotta train like astronauts to go there, bro. Like, it ain't no interview like, oh yeah, you got the job. See you today. See you at this day, at this time. No, bro, you got to train, bro. Like, nah, this ain't no regular job, bro. You got to go through eight months of training, bro. Let's find out. Welcome to Explained. Like, bro, if you got to train Offshore for a job, like you extract like, petroleum athlete, and natural gas from crazy. the ocean floor. They're some of the largest structures on the planet. Some deep sea rigs are as heavy as 200 million kilos and can reach depths of 2,500 to 3,000 meters. That's three times the size of the Burj Khalifa. So how do these skyscrapers get to the middle of the ocean? Simply put, first, they build the base of the rig onshore, then the drilling infrastructure and living quarters are assembled on top of it. And finally, the rig is towed out to the drill site. The type of rig being used is also crucial, and this depends on if it's just drilling or extracting as well, how deep the sea is, and how bad the weather gets in the area. Offshore rigs take weeks or months to get to the drilling location, which is often on the other side of the globe. And this is no ordinary journey. Shell's Appomattox, one of the biggest oil platforms in the Gulf of Mexico, made one such epic voyage. The base was built in South Korea, while the drilling infrastructure had to be assembled on it in the US. It literally traveled 23,335 kilometers, crossing three oceans on one of the largest transport ships on the planet. But this wasn't some calm, luxurious cruise. The Appomattox had to outrun a super typhoon in the Pacific Ocean, survive the rough winter waters around the Cape of Good Hope in South Africa, and narrowly avoid Hurricane Harvey that hit the US. Four hurricanes. This is gonna go up the coast. When it reached the Gulf of Mexico, it weighed as much as a space shuttle. And the final challenge was lowering it hundreds of meters to the seafloor to connect it to the subsea oil station. If you want to see more videos like this, hit that like button and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Life is tough on these offshore rigs, and there's a reason why offshore workers make as much as $305,000 a year. Okay. The job requires it's high precision, it. and drill workers are usually highly qualified petroleum or mechanical engineers. They also have to pass the basic offshore safety induction and emergency training, and this isn't easy. Workers learn how to escape off an oil platform, they learn helicopter escape drills, I couldn't do it. Survival I know that. at sea. Okay, so we'll... Basic firefighting and first aid. Besides this, working hours are long and tiring. And while the living quarters are comfortable and the entertainment zones help relieve stress, the isolation at sea for weeks and months can take a toll on mental health. But there's little room for error on the job. Mistakes in this workplace can be deadly for everyone on board. Ooh. The 
the worst offshore rig disaster in history was Piper Alpha. This rig was designed to produce oil, but later on, the company decided to include natural gas production as well. On July 6, 1988, disaster struck. A series of gas explosions ripped through the oil platform, which wasn't designed or equipped to handle gas-related accidents. The rig collapsed into the North Sea and 167 people were killed. Nature can be brutal out in the ocean. Offshore rigs encounter hurricanes and icy weather. Floating semi-submersible rigs that drill at depths of 500 to 3,500 meters get tossed around by massive waves. Rigs encounter water sprouts. What the hell? Bro. What do you do in a situation? Like, how do I train for this? <laughs> and they're at risk of being slammed into by nearby ships in bad weather. Then there's the chance of an unexpected surge in natural gas that can lead to disasters like Deepwater Horizon. So regular maintenance of pipelines are crucial and any repairs must be carried out immediately. And if it's being done manually by a diver, there's always the chance of encountering dangerous marine life like sharks. Yeah. Offshore rigs that are maintained well can last 40 years and at the end of their service, they must be safely disposed. The wells are sealed off, the workers are sent back to shore, and the top platform is removed. Engineers cut through the foundation that linked the top platform to the base. Then, an even bigger ship is commissioned to lift it intact and carry it to the scrapyard on shore for dismantling. The last leg of the journey must be carefully planned because any miscalculations can result in catastrophes like this. Offshore oil rigs are constantly surrounded by controversy. And while they've been in the spotlight for all the wrong reasons, there's no doubt that these deep sea giants are marvels of engineering. Have you ever seen an offshore rig up close? Have you ever been on one? Tell us about your experience in the comments. And don't, don't forget to subscribe to Explained. Okay, first off, 99.999999 people will never step foot on one of them bam things. Ain't no, I don't, there's no field trip. Just no, oh, let's go check out an oil rig. I don't even, bro, I, I don't even think the chances are high of you seeing one get transported. Oh, do you think they would let you do that? Yeah, you just want to be on this oil. I feel like I have to train for them to even let me be on that damn thing. I don't want to know. Could you do this job? I couldn't. Is the money worth it? Leave that up to your opinion. Me personally, $300,000 a year, possibly I'm making Nah, that gotta be like right off the bat. As soon as I get hired, it can't be you no know, like yeah. Uh, when you start off, you are gonna be making like eighty thousand when you start out. Uh, but in the course of ten years, you can make up to three hundred thousand. Yeah, yeah. No, bro, I need that three hundred thousand first day on. So let's say three hundred thousand. My first day, that's twenty five thousand dollars a month. Man, that ain't bad. But then you gotta take into account of taxes, all that other bullshit. I don't know. Is it worth it to y'all? Let me know. See y'all in the next one. Peace.